At number 10, we have Rose McGowan. Now, back in October of 2017, Rose McGowan slammed James Corden after he made some pretty serious and sensitive jokes about a disgraced film producer. When James made the unwise joke during his monologue, as the host on the Amp Bar Gala Los Angeles, James went on to say, It was a weird week watching the disgraced film producer be in hot water. And then he went on to ask the audience if any woman in the crowd would watch him take a bath. Rose was not only disgusted with the audience for cheering on the comedian, but she was extremely disappointed with James Corden for making fun of someone who hurt a lot of women. Rose went on to say in a series of tweets where in one she called James James Corden, a mother king piglet. And in another one, she said, hearing the roars and laughs shows exactly what kind of Hollywood you are. James would later come out with an apology and would acknowledge that his joke wasn't right and he was sorry for anyone he offended. However, James should have known better than to shed light on such a hurtful situation. At number 9 we have Halle Berry. Halle Berry is said to be one of the sweetest actors in Hollywood, so it makes you question what James might have done to get on her bad side. With the actress appearing on TBS Drop the Mic show with James, let's just say it got a little heated between the two stars. James would open up the show by mocking the star for her box office flop in the movie Catwoman. Halle then responded by acknowledging Catwoman tanked, but she took Kingsman to the Mother King Bank. The two would continue to spit back and forth with each other. With James's jokes being demeaning, Holly was quick to come to the battle to get the crowd to chant her name and won. But this wouldn't be the last of the two to work together. When Holly made an appearance on James's game show, Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts, the star would then go on to eat an unnamed animal body part to avoid answering a question. Now, if I had to eat some weird body part off an animal, I would probably refuse to work with the star ever again. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. And number eight, we have Piers Brosnan. So this feud has had some pretty sour moments. During a game, James show, spill your guts or fill your guts, James recalled a time where Piers was rude to him at a U2 concert. During the game, James was asked if a celebrity has ever been rude to him at a party. Corden spoke of a time he attended the same U2 concert as Piers. Now, Piers was there with friends and they decided to leave halfway through the concert. James went on to note that he and his wife moved into the area that they were in and Piers went to push him out of the way when he came back. James went on to say the star didn't even acknowledge James and that he just continued to head back to his area. James then labeled him as the rudest celebrity alive. If someone called me rude after stealing my spot, I probably wouldn't want to work with them either, but at the same time, I certainly wouldn't have pushed them out of the way. Now, Pierce never talked about the incident, so who knows if it was actually true. In number seven, against his writers. When James Corden decided to do an Ask Me Anything on Reddit, it could not have backfired any worse. One of his producers named Jack Allison had made a tweet in regards to how poorly James had treated his writing staff, which was included in the litany of complaints made against the host. Jack tweeted, I'd like to state once again for the record that I went to a WGA meeting for only late night writers and James Corden showed up without any of his staffers to advocate for a lower pay grade for late night writers. Now, James tried to refute his points, but honestly, his Twitter replies aren't even worth showing here. He basically called his own producer a liar and stated that he cared about his writers while simultaneously arguing for lower pay at the Writers Guild of America meeting. Number six, we have Liam Gallagher. Liam Gallagher once called James Corden a knob while stating why he would never join the star on Carpool Karaoke. In an interview with GQ magazine, Liam branded the star as a knob and mistaken him for starring in Gavin and Stacey. Liam was asked if he would ever consider doing carpool karaoke and he refused by saying, no thank you very much, not a chance mate, with that flat folk from Kevin and Perry. Liam's girlfriend pointed out that the show he meant to say was BBC's comedy series, Gavin and Stacey. Now, James starred in the show in 2007 and that's, how we, and that's how he came to stardom. Liam then notes he 
never watched the show and he doesn't have to watch it in order to know he won't like it. Now, the two did seemingly make up just in time for Liam to play on James Corden's show back in of October of 2017. But who knows how long the two will stay on good terms as Liam once said he likes his potatoes roasted. At number five, Liam Gallagher. I think that the one thing that James Corden is best known for is his carpool karaoke segment on his late night show. Over the series of episodes he's done, he's sung with everyone from One Direction to Adele to Migos and more. But even though the show reaches out to many artists, some of them have refused to participate in the segment, like Liam Gallagher, for example. Liam is the former singer for the band Oasis, and he told GQ magazine back in 2017 about how he was invited to film an episode of carpool karaoke with James Corden, and he flat out refused. Going more in depth into why he refused, Liam said quote, No thank you very much, no effing chance mate. With that fat bloke from Kevin and Perry, James Corden is a knobhead. End quote. Clearly he doesn't like James very much, but no one really knows why. Maybe it's personal, or maybe he just doesn't like James's vibes or something. Either way, carpool karaoke with Oasis is never gonna happen. At number 4 we have Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart is known for his ruthless and hilarious comedy pieces. It didn't surprise anyone when we found out the star would take on James Corden on the show Drop the Mic. Now, when the two finally did take the stage, the insults definitely came spewing out and both needed ice for the burns they were about to receive. James took a jab at Kevin's height and even brought out a little white stool to get Kevin to stand on. When it was finally Hart's turn to take the stage, he definitely came in with the heat by telling James that he may be small, but his bank account was big. The star then went on to say, people are nice to his face, but when they get home, he's not the comedian they wanted to see. Let's just say, this battle was not a disappointment, and it proves that our height does not define us. In number three, political harassment. While filming a segment on his show called Spill Your Guts, James was asked a very specific question about what happened when he saw Ivanka Trump at a wedding. James admitted that he was very drunk and continuously harassed the president's daughter at the wedding. He repeatedly told her that she needs to do something, which isn't exactly the place nor the time. Plus, who does James Corden think he is? He wasn't born in America. He came there so that he could make more money. So why does he feel this entitlement to trash the country that accepted him? Plus, harassing the president's daughter while at a wedding, while drunk, is perhaps the biggest indicator that James has no self-awareness. But I remember that, that we were quite drunk and we started going, Ivanka, you can do something. You can make a difference. I remember Ivanka was going, I'm trying. At number two, we have Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey almost refused to sing a song on Carpool Karaoke. When the singer showed up for her segment, she said she had no idea she had to sing. Mariah was signed on James's first episode, but there was one catch, she was refusing to sing. James said she came out and said, I'm not singing today. James being completely understanding said he would drive around and they would just have a chat. While struggling to initially secure even a fifth rate act for the show, James was excited to sign Mariah Carey. So when on the drive, he said to himself, this is carpool karaoke, so without the singing, it wouldn't be the show he wanted. So the star decided to sing to Mariah, so at least it was still on the show. Luckily for James, Mariah would change her mind and would sing along to a number of her greatest hits with the comedian. In the number one spot today, we have Brian Adams. Brian Adams once walked out of carpool karaoke, and how he did it will definitely leave you laughing. Brian was invited onto the best of 80s carpool karaoke segment which would be in honor of the Back to Future anniversary. Now, James would note during a game of Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts that he didn't think Brian's management team told Brian it was sort of a collaboration with lots of other singers from that time period because when the star walked in and saw the list of other people and saw he was going to be working with James Corden, he walked out of the building and bolted to his car. Brian was never heard from or seen from on the set again. He just bolted and was gone. Which makes you wonder, who was on that list to make him bolt, or was it just James Corden? At number 10, Bill Maher. I'm sure we are all familiar with how outspoken Bill Maher is. 
He said some things in the past that people have no doubt taken offense to, but after one comment that he made, it seems as though he's made an enemy with James Corden, and now they just don't like each other. Back in 2019, Bill made some offensive comments about weight, where he said, quote, Fat shaming doesn't need to end, it needs to make a comeback. Some amount of shame is good. Shame is the first step in reform, end quote. When James saw this, he took the first eight minutes of his late show episode to discuss the comments that Bill made, where he said, quote, So I sat at home and I'm watching this and all I could think of was, like, oh man, somebody needs to say something about this. If only there was someone with a platform who knew what it was really like to be overweight, and then I realized, oh, that's me. There's a common and insulting misconception that fat people are stupid and lazy and we're not, end quote. Bill later responded to James's criticisms of his comments, essentially telling him that he was wrong to not shame people for their appearance, but he was pretty heated. People often have opposing views, but it looks like this is a view that they won't really come out of. At number 9, Jack Allison. Jack Allison is a member of the Writers Guild of America and used to write for Jimmy Kimmel's show back in the day, so he knows his way around late night TV. So when he found out about the shady things that James was doing on his show, he had to call him out for it and it was not pretty. According to Jack, he went to a WGA meeting for late night writers and James showed up to said meeting to advocate for a lower pay grade for late night writers. Doesn't really sound like something to advocate for since it's affecting people's livelihoods, right? Jack alleged that since James showed up to the meeting without any other staffers from his show, that James made that trip to the meeting just for this request. Jack also alleged that James wanted to hire writers assistants for 13 week periods so that he didn't have to pay them as much as a full time contractor. He didn't think that this was fair at all and so he decided to expose James on Twitter. James fired back online saying that this was all untrue, but Jack stuck to his story. I guess he really had it out for James because of how unfairly he wanted to treat his staff and honestly, I can't blame him. Now before I carry on with this list, I would like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far because it really does help the channel out and we appreciate your support. At number 8, Ricky Gervais. It's a common thing for comedians to take jabs at other comedians. It's really just part of the culture of comedy, but I feel like when it comes to Ricky Gervais and James Corden, the jabs that he makes aren't just for laughs, but there's actual hate fueling them as well. Even though they both rose to fame in similar ways, both getting their start on British television, then making their way into movies and hosting, Ricky still seems to have a distaste for James, and he makes that apparent at every moment he can by making jokes about the late night TV host. This first started back in 2009 when James portrayed Ricky on his show. I guess Ricky wasn't a fan of the way that he was played on TV because since then, he's been a little hostile towards James. One source commented on Ricky's feelings towards James when they said, quote, Ricky is now somewhat obsessed, attacking James when his jokes fall flat and poking fun of his size, end quote. In recent years, Ricky has also made a few jazz at Corden's jokes about Harvey Weinstein as well as James's role in the movie Cats. At number 7, we have Patrick Stewart. Now, in 2010, at the Glamour Awards, James Corden was at the height of his career while he was hosting the event. However, Patrick Stewart was also present at the event, and he was tasked with presenting the category for Film of the Year. When he stepped up to do his role, Patrick would begin to tease the comedian for his body language throughout the event. Patrick would say, I want to speak to James here. It's James, isn't it? James would then walk up to the star and the two had an epic stare down. While the star carried on with his critique, Patrick noted that when the presenters were on stage and the recipients were receiving their awards, James was standing in the back of the stage with his hands in his pockets looking around like he wished he was anywhere but in the event. Now the two began to spit insults back and forth with each other until James made a pretty insensitive joke about Patrick's age. Well, all I can say is age doesn't define us and sometimes it's better just to laugh at yourself than to overreact. At number 6, Artie Lang. Comedian Artie Lang seems to have a lot to say about a handful of Hollywood stars, especially those who have been associated with Howard Stern. Artie and Howard once worked together when he served as something of a sidekick to Stern on the Howard Stern show back in 2001 to 2009, but he was forced to leave the show due to his substance abuse issues. It seems like the comedian carried that grudge with him for a long time because he really doesn't have anything nice to say about Howard or anyone else that he's worked with. For example, James Corden. Back in 2016, during Artie's podcast called Artie Quitter, the comedian started ripping on Stern saying that he doesn't like how his comedy has changed from being more brash and abrasive to being more celebrity friendly, but then somehow he got into ripping on James Corden as well since he was a guest on Howard's show not too long before this episode of Artie's podcast. 
The comedian started making comments about James saying quote, When James Corden opens his fat effing mouth to do karaoke in a car, something that wouldn't be effing funny to the secretaries at an accounting firm and gets an Emmy for it, I'm allowed to say that he sucks. End quote. Those were some harsh words for someone who I don't think has ever been personally associated with. So I guess this is just him projecting his anger onto James, but the bottom line here is that he's certainly not a fan. In at number five, unrelatable. James Corden decided it was his duty to stand up for every overweight person in the world and defending their right to eat when Bill Maher said that we should bring back fat shaming. And judging by the way Corden responded to this clip, you would think that Bill called him out specifically. He didn't though. James is just that easily offended and has a bigger platform to cry on than most people. The point Bill was trying to make was a comedic one that missed the mark, but he was emphasizing that America needs to bring back shame, which it does. We should all have a little bit of shame, in fact. James tried to make this his champion moment of being the king of all that is good in the world, but started to lose people when he continuously made it about himself. He kept saying, this hurt me because I wanted to be in movie roles, but was too out of shape. His remarks hurt me because I was never accepted by society. But there he is sitting behind a late night show desk, no problem. Also, in my humble opinion, if he didn't feel some shame about the way that he looked, James would have probably never been motivated enough to create his own show, Gavin and Stacey. He's trying too hard to be a fake idol by making his audience believe that he's offended by remarks that have nothing to do with him. Literally nothing to do with him. At number four, Asia Argento and Rose McGowan. Sometimes it seems as though James Corden has trouble reading the room. Yes, he is a comedian, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be constantly cracking jokes because there is an appropriate time and place for comedy and you have to be mindful of that. James's lack of respect for the Me Too movement is the reason why Asia Argento and Rose McGowan hate James Corden so much, because after he made jokes about Harvey Weinstein at the height of his public takedown, they never saw him the same way. Back in 2017, James was hosting a black tie event for AIDS research where he did a little comedy monologue that seriously fell flat. He made several jokes about Weinstein saying things like, quote, this evening is so lovely that Weinstein already invited it up to his room for a massage, and quote, it's been a weird week, hasn't it? Watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Ask any of the women who watch him take a bath. It's weird watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Two Hollywood stars who were heavily involved in exposing Weinstein for his crimes, Asia Argento and Rose McGowan, took serious offense to James's jokes, and they had some harsh words for him, calling the comedian an effing piglet and saying, quote, shame on this pig and everyone who grunted with him, end quote. There are just some things that you shouldn't joke about, and the situation with Weinstein was certainly one of those things. And number three, we have Britney Spears. Britney Spears once said, carpool karaoke with James Corden was extremely awkward. And the video shows us it truly was. In an interview, Britney said the show was fun and James was extremely nice. However, she found her overall experience awkward. Britney noted that sometimes she would have to tell the star that she didn't want to hear the song again and it was cut out of the video. One of the songs she asked him not to play again was of course, Hit me baby one more time. Britney said he just kept playing them and then he put on a wig and Britney felt like she had to go along with it because he was so nice, but she was really embarrassed throughout the whole process. Safe to say you probably won't catch Britney in a car with James again. And finally at number one, Hollywood. Now I know this isn't necessarily a celebrity, but I would argue that much of Hollywood doesn't like James Corden. Though yes, he's getting booked for a lot of roles these days, a lot of movie critics have some harsh words for the comedian. One of the most recent negative criticisms that James received from a number of sources came from his performance in the movie Prom. A lot of people didn't like his portrayal of the character, and many took offense because of the way the character was played because James seemed to have laid into a lot of gay stereotypes while in character. On top of that, James has been criticized for other roles like his character in the movie Cats, and even his hosting of the Friends reunion. There are a lot of people who think that he's just doing the absolute most in Hollywood and it's not good, so a lot of people just don't like him for that. In at number 10, early fame. James Corden revealed that he had to actually have therapy to stop being a brat after he became intoxicated by fame for the first time. Even as Gavin and Stacey co-star Rob Brydon had to step in and tell him off for his rude behavior while on set. Rob recalls saying, look, this is a bit awkward to say, but I'm just hearing these things about you and you've got to know that the way you behave has an effect on people. Which is bizarre because the whole reason that he wrote this show for himself to, you know, star in was because that he was sick and tired of people being rude to him over his weight and, and many other things. So to just turn around and be rude didn't really make sense. In number nine, fake driving. 
Once transitioning from comedic actor to late night host, James had to come up with some new games that would keep his audience interested. It's a simple concept, but something that is at the very least relatable to most audiences. Other than having a giant celebrity in your passenger seat, that is. Well, it turns out that the whole thing is a sham and a cheap way to trick their audience. A tweet went viral showing that James Corden doesn't actually drive the vehicle during the show, but rather has it being pulled around on a trailer. They're doing carpool karaoke. That is so funny. Hey, Bieber. Justin, Justin Bieber, Bieber. Oh and James Gordon. That's so great. In at number eight, Fight Club. The second rule of Late Late Show Fight Club. No, 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 is you... James, the first and the second rule of Late Late Show Fight Club is I am not doing Late Late Show Fight Club. Okay? Even though James Gordon had an excellent opportunity to chat with Edward Norton, he ruined that chance by trying to do some weak comedic version of Fight Club using his own writing staff. Right from the start, you can tell that Ed just doesn't want any part of this, and why would he? Fight Club was a great film, but it's one of the many that the actor has been a part of. Plus, he was there trying to promote a new movie, so why waste time on something like this? Although James still isn't getting it until Norton tells him that there are better ways of expressing masculinity. All the guy wants to do is talk about his film Motherless Brooklyn, which he not only starred in, but also directed and wrote. But no, James wants a Fight Club parody sketch. Okay, what a waste of a guest. At number seven, Ricky Whittle. Actor Ricky Whittle, best known for his roles on The 100 and American Gods, isn't a fan of James Corden after he called the late night host out for comments that he made about a show that the two of them had once starred in. Ricky used to be on a British soap opera called Holly Oaks, and back in 2000, James was a guest star on one of the episodes. Years later, when asked about his time on the show, James had nothing positive to say about it. He told sources about his experience on the show, saying, quote, I'd actually rather die than go back. It's effing awful. It just breeds all these people walking around in this chicken in a basket fame, talking about going to LA, you know? End quote. Ricky did not appreciate the shade that James threw at the show that gave them both their start, and so he clapped back at James where he said, quote, It's very childish that he's slating the place where he came from, the place that made him. Good luck to him, I hope he doesn't bump into us on a night out. End quote. I think it's safe to say that Ricky is not a fan at all. In at number six, distracted hosting. While hosting the Glamour Woman of the Year Awards, James got himself into a now famous argument with Patrick Stewart. Apparently while hosting, he looked completely disinterested and many felt that he gave off an attitude like he was better than the event. Plus, while recipients were accepting their awards, there was James just standing off to the side texting during a live award show. So when Patrick Stewart came on stage, he decided to confront James over his rude behavior. But because some people had noticed what James was doing, Patrick seemed to be the rude one in this interaction. Although in retrospect, he was a hero ahead of his time. Take a look at this awkward exchange and keep in mind that this was 10 years ago. No, seriously, go on. Okay. No, um, go on. You can see my belly and we can all see you dying right now. Let's go for it. Here we go. Patrick was simply trying to tell James not to text while people are accepting their awards and instead of apologizing, he got in Patrick Stewart's face. Like, what was he gonna do, fight him? Because he asked you to have common sense? Bit rude? At number five, we have Jack Allison. Jack Allison used to write for Jimmy Kimmel Live back in 2010. The writer would then tell a story on Twitter in 2019 about the time he went to a union meeting that James Corden also attended. Jack noted the WGA meeting was only for the late night writers. However, James Corden showed up with none of his staff to advocate a lower pay grade for the writers, which meant James made a special trip to ask a trade union to allow him to decrease the salaries of his employees at the late night show. Jack explained that James wanted to hire writers assistants and he wanted to give the assistants a chance to be there and that's why there would be a lower pay grade for them. James would then later say he never wanted to pay the writers less than they deserved. However, Jack would tweet out later to deny the comedian's claims and said, I said what I said and it was accurate. In at number four, joked about assault. Right around the time that people like Rose McGowan and other accusers started stepping up and calling out Harvey Weinstein for his egregious behavior, James thought it would be fun to joke about it. Due to James Corden being a comedic actor and not a stand-up comedian, his jokes had absolutely no legs or timing. As a result, the audience has mostly groaned uncomfortably about the extremely graphic and too soon material that was clearly not well suited for a charity event. After the immense backlash, James tweeted, to be clear, sexual assault is no laughing matter. 
I was not trying to make light of Harvey's inexcusable behavior, but to shame him, the abuser, not his victims. I am truly sorry for anyone offended. That was never my intention. Oh, so now shaming is okay, just as long as it's not happening to you. Another Italian actor named Asia Argento, who alleges that Weinstein sexually assaulted her when she was 21, tweeted a video of Corden's joke and added the caption, shame on this pig and everyone who grunted with him. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name. At number three, Pierce Brosnan. You know when you meet someone who just rubs you the wrong way? Well, this is apparently how Pierce Brosnan felt about James Corden because they had a run in at a concert one time and it seemingly wasn't a pleasant experience. During an episode of The Late Late Show in 2017, James Corden spilled the tea about a celebrity that he thought was rude during their segment of Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts. That night's guest Khloe Kardashian asked James about his worst experience with a celebrity and James told the viewers about a run-in that he had with Pierce at a concert while with his wife. James said quote, I went to see you 2 and Pierce Brosnan was there with some friends and they left halfway through the gig to go off so me and my wife moved into this area and literally this arm went on here and pushed me out of the way. I looked at him like that and he didn't even glance at me. End quote. So basically Pierce left his section for a bit and James moved in but when Pierce got back he shoved James out of the way. There was never really an explanation as to why Pierce shoved James, but clearly he just doesn't like the guy. You don't always have to have a reason, but I just wonder what prompted Pierce to do that. In at number two, hates his fans. Going back to that disastrous Reddit Ask Me Anything post that he made, we have countless people who were once fans of James claiming negative interactions with the host. One Redditor mentioned the time that he saw James Corden filming the UK game show A Week of Their Own, and while other stars were polite and engaged with fans, Corden couldn't have cared less. It's a bit of a long post, so I'll just point out the most egregious examples. The Redditor writes, James came in for a brief moment, someone asked asked politely for a quick picture and he abruptly said later and then left to his changing room for the rest of the night, which means they never got the photo. Then they closed it off by saying, seeing him like that made me realize everything you see of his on TV is a complete persona and really his natural personality is just a complete self-entitled and that's a word that I'm not allowed to say on YouTube. So <laughs> but you get the point, you get the point. I'm not gonna say that word, it's a bad one. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Happy Mother's Day. Then there was this crazy airplane story involving a woman and a baby. There's for sure no way to verify whether or not the story is true, but it does seem pretty much in line with what others have been saying about the late night host. Apparently a woman with her crying baby was sat next to James Corden on a flight, but to many people's surprise, James didn't complain. He simply put in his noise canceling headphones and pulled a mask over his eyes, then turned away from the woman to sleep. However, when the plane landed, Corden remained in his seat as the woman with the baby struggled to open her overhead compartment. What makes the story even worse is that the woman then turned to James and asked him to at least hold the baby while she was getting the bags down. Turns out that woman was his wife and that baby was his baby. 